The countdown has begun. We are only two weeks away from finals and students are logging off of Facebook and onto Blackboard. But are they also turning to substances other than coffee to combat the long hours at the library? Hello and welcome to Temple Update. I'm Becca Hendrickson. And I'm Tasia Morgan. We now go live to Chris Dennison who is outside the library. He has information on what appears to be a growing trend among college students to use recreational drugs. Chris, what can you tell us? Thanks, Tasia. That's right. As finals draw near, students begin to stress out about the added workload. Some students will resort to illegally obtained prescriptions to help cope with the added pressure. This is a busy time of year for studying on college campuses. It's also a busy time of year for study drug dealers. John Domino from the Tuttleman Counseling Office told me how some students look to get an edge by buying prescription drugs illegally. Stimulants, uh, which are often prescribed for conditions like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, are abusable drugs, and some students who haven't been given the diagnosis um, might uh, obtain them uh, illegally, you know, through other means. It can be a very lucrative business for those who sell these prescriptions. I spoke with a local dealer of Adderall, a common study drug, to get the inside story on the business. I have hidden his face and distorted his voice to protect his identity. I'll sell my script that I, I'm going to get this Wednesday, and I'll be going through it Thursday morning. I'll be out. There won't be any left. How much money do you, can you expect to make off of that one prescription? But anywhere from $300 for the script to upwards of six, $700 on a script, especially around midterm and finals. Yeah, there's definitely some good money in it. Study drugs are now competing with caffeine for students who are trying to get an edge. I spoke with some students to see how aware the community was of these kinds of drugs. Everyone knows, you know, that there's stuff floating around campuses, uh, you know, Focalin, Concerta, Ritalin, Adderall. So many people that I know have been looking for Adderall. Yeah, I would say that people medicate themselves a lot in order to handle a lot of these stressors that uh, influence their workload and their lives on campus. John Domino stresses the fact that recreational use of any prescription medication is not safe, especially if they aren't prescribed to you. If you show signs of uh, substance abuse, you are encouraged to contact the Tuttleman Counseling Office uh, for help. Reporting live outside of Paley Library, I'm Chris Dennison. Back to you. Thanks, Chris. A Temple University student is under investigation after being taken by police officers from his off-campus home for allegedly cooking the drug MDMA, also known as Molly. Police officers and fire crews were called to the 1900th block of North Gratch Street around 10 p.m. Friday night after receiving reports from neighbors who believed they smelled fumes coming from the student's home. After entering the house, firefighters identified what police are saying to be a drug lab. We spoke with other Temple University students and they told us what they saw. There was caution tape on the outsides of the houses and then there was a minivan inside the caution tape. And then there was cops outside still, and they had a couple of co cop cars walking the street up. Next thing you know, they, they're pulling the, the one kid out of the house, and they're talking to him, a bunch of police. Uh, they handcuffed him, put him in the car, um, and then just tons of police were going in. I've never seen any activity really coming in and out of the house. Um, we live right across the street, so... You would think we would see our neighbors coming in and out, but there was never much activity going on. Philadelphia police have reported as of this morning that the student has not been arrested, but the incident is still under investigation. And now according to teensdrugabuse.com, side effects of ecstasy include an increase in heart rate as well as an elevated blood pressure. You may also experience nausea. You could lose track of sense of time and experience other changes in perception. Increased levels of this drug can heighten the risk of seizures and heart arrhythmia. Temple University Japan campus is bouncing back after a series of three devastating events rocking the country over two years ago. These events included an earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear accident. The disasters caused the value of the Japanese yen to drop and along with it, student enrollment in TU Japan. With the economy continuing to improve, the number of students is on the rise. Enrollment is up 5% from last fall. 
a Philadelphia business attorney and Temple alum, is helping the students boost the Beasley School of Law. Mary Schusterman gave $1.1 million to expand the business law curriculum. The entire donation will be used for the Schusterman professorship in transactional and business law. Schusterman's gift to the law school says that after all of these years, we remain very important to him and, of course, him to us. Schusterman is a 1936 graduate of Temple's Law School. The most wonderful time of the year is fast approaching and students are getting ready to head home for the holidays. For students living on and off campus, it is important to secure your apartment or dorm before leaving. Temple University has a few tips on how to properly lock up your belongings. Make sure you lock all your doors and your windows and your window guards. Make sure that you have your mail stopped, and if you can't do that through the post office, make sure that you have someone else pick your mail up for you. Other tips include hiding all valuables and making sure the last person to leave locks the door and sets the alarm. With Thanksgiving coming up next week, Ambler Campus is doing its part to make sure all members of the community enjoy the food-filled holiday. Updates Ashley Farris has the story of the upcoming holiday season. Sometimes it's easy to forget that for many families, this will just be another time of hardship, especially in these difficult economic times. During this season, everyone deserves a little something for which to be thankful. In the past 10 years, the Ambler campus has provided over 300 turkeys that have been donated to the Maddie M. Dixon community cupboard in Ambler Borough. We try to uh, get about 50 turkeys every year. What we do is, rather than people bringing in turkeys, which can get a little bit cumbersome and difficult for people, uh, we have them donate funds. In coordination with the Campus Turkey Drive, the Student Government Association holds pretzel sales throughout the month, and all proceeds go to support the Turkey Drive. We have a table set up over in the Learning Center, which is the busiest building here on campus. Students come in and out pretty much all hours of the day, and from 11 until 3 o'clock we sell the pretzels. Um, they go for a dollar a pretzel and everyone that walks by seems very interested about what we're doing and they want to get involved even if they don't have money with them they'll say I'm coming back tomorrow and I'm going to buy a pretzel from you guys so make sure that you're here. The Ambler campus community has helped hundreds of families enjoy a holiday meal that might have otherwise been unavailable to them. We started it uh, near the, the end of October, and it goes all the way until uh, right around Thanksgiving. For more information about how you can help the Temple Turkey Drive, visit ambler.temple.edu. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Ashley Farris. Temple's main campus is also providing a help in hand for Thanksgiving with a food and can drive to help those in the community. Non-perishable items can be donated at locations across campus, including all student dorms, the second floor of 1509 Cecil B. Moore, and the 12th floor of Anderson Hall. Donations will be accepted until November 27th for the holiday. The student organization Students for Justice in Palestine held their annual Palestinian Nights. The event had a performance by the cultural Palestinian dance group Freedom Deb Katru and performed spoken word poetry last Friday. The students spent the rest of the night enjoying food, performances, and dancing. They also had a charity fundraiser supporting Palestinian resistance and culture. All proceeds donated helped the Children's Relief Fund. They donate money to Palestinian kids to come over here and get um, treatment for their really severe injuries, and then they go back home. The student organization raised around $1,400 for the PCRF. Studying abroad is a once-in-a-lifetime experience to be able to go out and explore another country. Students also take this opportunity to get a hands-on experience in their field. From London, Temple Update's Robert Monroe has an in-depth look. Temple University aims to equip its students with both academic and experiential tools that they can use in the future. My vision for Temple students is that they learn how to apply that experience in the workplace across all their future professional and vocational pathways. I'm interning at Exposure Magazine and we want to both 
bring awareness to different cultural issues as well as like give young people an opportunity to express themselves. I intern with a company called Hero and Wolf mm -hmm. and it is a pet and people accessory company in East London. Tyler has published articles online for Exposure magazine and Marissa has even traveled to Africa to document her company's activity abroad. All I've been doing this whole time is like not only helping the site but like adding stuff to my portfolio more mm -hmm. stuff that I can show off like hey I've written professionally. I knew they were going because they told me when I first started they were going to Kenya for three weeks. They said we've been thinking about it and we really want you to come with us and I asked my parents obviously and I was like actually I'm not really asking you I'm telling you I'm going to Kenya. <laughs> the important thing for me is that you understand the privilege of the experience. Here I can kind of make decisions and help decide what's important and be way more creative than I think I would be allowed to be other places. I was really pleased that I was able to get all the opportunities that I've had so far and do all the work that I've been doing. I'm pretty lucky to be doing something so big in mm. such a small like organization. An in-depth seminar and hands-on experience in an international workplace are helping these owls maximize their potential. It's safe to say their futures are looking bright. Reporting from Temple Update in London, I'm Rob Monroe. Marissa Pina is not the only student who traveled across the country to study abroad. The Tyler School of Art, along with the School of Media and Communications, displayed work from photography students who participated in the South Africa program last summer. The show showcase contained over photographs, architecture, animals, and landscapes. Still to come, we head to the Red Cross where the temple administrator is giving back all year round. And we've got spirit, yes we do, but one temple student is more spirited than you. We'll introduce you to temple's biggest fan. And I'm Tommy Slade, I here at the sports desk. Football season is almost over, which is a good thing because I don't think I can watch them lose any more heartbreakers. I'll have the highlights from Niall's loss against UCF. We're in the 20s and 30s this morning, but the sun is shining and it's going to turn out to be a surprisingly nice day. Plus, I've got your weekend and game day forecast. Don't go anywhere. Temple Update will be right back. Whether Temple sports teams are doing well or struggling, one Temple student is always cheering them on. Update's Kevin Ott went to get his face painted with TUTV's most spirited contest winner. At any university, there are fans that show up a few games a season, and there are others that make perfect attendance a priority. Not only that, but they show up incredibly early, tailgating in the parking lot with family and friends. One such fan is Kelly Doherty, a junior public relations major who won TUTV's most spirited owl competition. I love cherry and white. I bleed it. Before kickoff at the Temple UCF game, Kelly led the team out onto the field with none other than Hoover the Owl. <laughs> Kelly was always very outgoing, very talkative. Always her goal in life is to be a star, so this is her start. <laughs> She's into quite a bit uh, at school, quite a bit of activity, so when she told us she was into this, didn't surprise us a bit. The contest was run by TUTV and Prowl PR, Temple's own student-run public relations firm. Through social media, Kelly made an impact on the judges and was picked as the winner. I was really excited. It was a tough competition, let me tell you. There are a lot of spirited uh, owls at our school, so I was really honored to be able to win the competition. Kelly, a native of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, loves the city of Philadelphia, but has big dreams for her future career. So I hope to go work at a PR firm somewhere, maybe for Disney. Not a coincidence, Kelly was also voted most spirited in her high school class. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Kevin Ott. Temple is launching its second Owl Crowd campaign tonight. Owl Crowd is a financial campaign similar to Kickstarter, but 100% of the contributions go towards a funded project. Eight projects are on this campaign, including the School of Media and Communications Bell Tower Music Senior Capstone class. Any Temple University department or organization can apply to get funding for a project, and after 45 days of funding, the group will receive all contributions. Pretty much anyone associated with the university can do it. All the projects are Temple related, Temple made. Um, and, I mean, they're really special to the university. It's one place you can go to see almost anything that anyone in the university is doing. The first Owl Crowd campaign that was launched over the summer raised almost $2,000. Anyone can donate by going to giving.temple.edu. 
There's still more to come on Temple Update. Tommy Sladek is at the sports desk with a look at the youngest owls on the men's basketball team. Plus, Frank the Frat Boy and Alexandra Gallo will tell you how to dress for this not-so-fall-like weather. Temple Update will be right back. Not a doctor, but he's still saving lives. One of Temple's own is giving back this holiday season, one platelet at a time. It's the season of giving and being thankful. For one Temple administrator, this season of giving lasts all year long. Senior Athletic Director for Communications Larry Dougherty can be seen on the sideline of all major Temple sporting events. He has made a second home, however, at the local Red Cross, where he donates blood platelets to cancer patients. It was after the NCAA tournament two years ago that I uh, passed Red Cross and said, I've got time, I can stop in and do this, and started doing it, and I've been doing it uh, twice a month ever since. Doherty has now donated over 150 times, beginning over 30 years ago in college to help a friend who had hemophilia, a blood clotting disorder that can be treated with platelets. In addition to giving blood, he has also given bone marrow, which saved the life of a three-year-old boy with cancer. I was all set to meet uh, the young boy and the parents, and then uh, I get a note maybe a week before then that he had passed away. So it was a great high for me to be able to think I you know, be able to save a life, but I only saved a life for a year. I think when you can do something to help others, and it's really not that difficult to do, why not? You can't cure cancer, but you can help people with cancer, and I think this is something that you can do to help people with cancer is to is to give uh, platelets. Located on Spring Garden, just blocks away from main campus, and the entire process takes between two and three hours. That's really a moving story. Thanks, Becca. Larry can be spotted at all Temple sporting events. And we now head over to Tommy Sladak with all things Temple Athletics. Tommy? Hello, Al fans, and welcome back to the Sports Desk. I'm Tommy Sladak. The basketball team looked to shake off their loss to Kent State as they traveled down to Maryland to play the Towson Tigers. But first, we take a look at the football team's home game against nationally ranked UCF. On Saturday, the football team looked to get their second straight home win as they took on the number 15 ranked Central Florida Knights. Early in the second quarter, UCF's William Stanback runs 49 yards in for the score. Six minutes left to play in the half, PJ Walker runs in for a three yard touchdown. The Owls go into the second half leading 21 to 19. Three minutes left to play in the third, Walker launches one up and finds Robbie Anderson for a 75 yard touchdown. As time's winding down, Walker connects this time with Chris Parthmore in the end zone to give the Owls a 36-29 lead. With a minute six left to play, UCF's Blake Bortles chucks up a prayer to J.J. Wharton, who makes a remarkable catch in the end zone. As time expires, UCF boots a 23-yard field goal and goes on to beat the Owls 39-36. On Thursday, the men's basketball team traveled to Maryland to take on the Towson Tigers. Temple's Anthony Lee dropped 20 points and put up 9 boards, while Will Cummings scored 18 points and dished 5 assists. Despite Lee and Cummings' efforts on offense, Towson's Jarrell Benjamin scored a whopping 32 points, leading the Tigers to a 75-69 win over the Owls. And the basketball team this year is made up of some young members that are seeing a lot of time on the court. Updates Anka Patel took to the hardwood to talk to some of the basketball team's newest members. Basketball is back and Fran Duffy's squad has a lot of young faces. Two of the new faces have been seeing big minutes. Freshman Josh Brown and Mark Williams have quickly impressed their teammates. I like, you know, the point guard Josh Brown from Jersey. Um, he's a very good mid-range shooter. Um, I like Mark, a uh, big guy from Montrose, came from a you know top high school in the country. Williams and Brown have even impressed their coach, so much so that they both have been seeing big minutes. And Williams has been in the starting lineup for the first three games. Juan Fernandez played a lot of minutes as a freshman. I think Lavoy Allen played a boatload of minutes as a freshman. Uh, it's what the situation has dictated. Both freshmen are excited to be playing big minutes so early in their college career, but also understand the expectations that come with playing in college. Very appreciative, very blessed. But um, to whom much is given, much is expected. So, you know, I know I got a lot of shoes to fill. Uh, getting minutes is, uh, I'm loving it. and. Getting the trust from them and helps me on the court. Both Josh and Mark are not from the Philadelphia area, but have transitioned well into college life. Uh, it's going well. You know, I went to school down in D.C., so no, uh, not that big of an adjustment. I'm comfortable. I'm a city guy. Uh, I actually have family down here, so like I said, I'm very comfortable. First team All-State in high school, Josh Brown is impressing teammates with his work ethic and defending ability. 
He's a great on-ball defender. He's going to press you 94 feet. Uh, that's just one thing that he does and takes pride in, too. But. Just three games into the season, the two young Temple Owls have proven that they can hold their own. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Mac Patel. Following a 70-58 win over Delaware last week, the Lady Owls hosted the Auburn Tigers in their home opener on Saturday. With one await remaining in the game, freshman Fionda Fitzgerald nails a three-point shot, giving the Owls a 76-74 lead. Less than a minute later, Tiana Williams sinks both of her free throws, securing a 78-74 win. The team improves to 3-0 all in the season. All you diehard Owl fans, make sure you bundle up on Saturday when the Owls play their last home game of the season against UConn. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. at the link. If you can't make it to the game, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at TU underscore Sports Desk for play-by-play -play updates. Guys? Thanks, Tommy. Coming up, Mother Nature just can't make up her mind. Hot or cold, what's it going to be? Alexandra Gala will have your weekend weather watch. Plus, we take you back to a time when a one-day adult ticket to Disney World was only $28. Temple Update will be right back. So, Tasia, it felt like spring. Now it's fall. All I want is summer. What do I do? I don't know. This weather is really unpredictable, but all I really want to know is what we can expect for the football game. We're now going to go to both mine and my mother's favorite part of the show. I love Frank the Frat Boy. My mom loves Allie. Let's just see what the rest of the week is going to look like. Good morning, Becca and Tassie and all you owls out there. We're looking at a nice fall day today. It was a bitter cold morning, but currently it's 45 degrees. It is mostly sunny right now, and it will warm up to be 53 degrees today. More clouds will move in throughout the day, so it might feel a bit colder with the wind. But there is a 0% chance of rain, so there's not much to worry about, at least for today. Frank the Frat Boy has on jeans and his temple hoodie. Maybe bring a hat if you can, or even a light jacket, because you'll want to stay warm. Looking ahead to your weekend and five-day forecast, tonight will drop to a low of 44 degrees. Tomorrow starts your weekend, and it's a, it'll be a bit nicer than today, but still cloudy. The high will be 57 degrees, but there's a 40% chance of rain later in the day. The low will be warmer than what we've seen at night at 46 degrees, with winds light and variable. Now Saturday is where you might start to see some problems. Temperatures will rise to only 49 degrees, and there's a 20% chance of rain. Kickoff at the link for Temple Football is at 7, and it will be very cold. The low will drop below freezing to 27 degrees. I will be at the game sticking around after for the annual touchdown toss, and I'll have that story for you next week. Sunday will bring even colder temperatures along with some heavy winds. It will be a high of only 33 degrees and a low of an extremely cold 21 degrees. The sun will be back on Monday with a high of 38. For the latest weather updates, be sure to follow us on Twitter at TU underscore weatherwatch. It's about that time when we send you back to the 80s. This one dates back to almost exactly 25 years ago. Welcome to Temple Update. I'm Lisa Johnson. And I'm Ann Lingefelter. Well, today is the day voters will go to the polls to elect our country's 41st president. Every election year, one of the special constituencies targeted by candidates is the college vote. Students are often geared toward a liberal education as well as liberal political ideas. Conservatives are very hard to find. Uh, it's almost over, it's overwhelmingly liberal. Both parties say they are anticipating a victory. WRTI, Temple's 24-hour jazz radio station, has received an award of excellence from the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters. Temple's Ambler campus kicked off the basketball season last Thursday by hosting a pep rally and bonfire. Not only was it a start of a new tradition, but it was a step towards unifying the campuses. I'm Ann Lingefelter. Thanks for joining us. Seven, See you next time. Six, That's all for Temple Update. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for the latest details. You can also watch us on TUTV, Comcast Channel 50, and Verizon Channel 45. For Tati Morgan and the rest of the Update team, I'm Becca Hendrickson. Have a great week.